Tsubasa Shiki is an ugly, disgusting loser. He moves to Hokkaido in winter, ends up hiking three hours in the wrong direction, and see a hot gal who is wearing a short skirt at minus 8 degrees Celsius that made him excited about his loser life. The anime begins with Tsubasa Shiki, our ugly protagonist, talking to his father while riding in a taxi. His father apologizes for not being able to receive him and instructs him to go home for now. Tsubasa then asks the driver to stop at a particular location. Upon getting off, he is captivated by the snowy panorama surrounding him. He notes the spaciousness of the area and the absence of people and cars, a stark contrast to Tokyo. Tsubasa also observes the fresh air, but as he takes a deep breath, he feels the icy chill, realizing the harshness of Hokkaido's winter. Faced with the freezing cold, Tsubasa attempts to use his phone for guidance, but the cold and his gloves render the tactile screen useless. Realizing the challenging situation of moving to such a place at that specific time, he contemplates the idea. In his struggle, he encounters Minami Fayuki, a girl in Hokkaido, who stands out in the cold with her short skirt. Tsubasa is surprised by her presence and notices her vulnerability to the cold. Approaching Minami, Tsubasa expresses his intention to go somewhere and shows her the map on his phone. Despite the cold, Minami, with a red nose, offers assistance. As Tsubasa gets closer, he is struck by her cuteness. Minami asks what's going on, and Tsubasa shares his desire to go to a specific location. Minami, understanding the situation, offers directions and informs him that walking will take about three hours due to the vastness of Kitami. She suggests waiting for a bus that will arrive in approximately five minutes. Feeling grateful for Minami's help, Tsubasa reflects on how he would have struggled without her assistance. Minami inquires about his origin, and Tsubasa reveals that he recently moved from Tokyo due to family matters. This revelation surprises Minami who speculates that he might eventually open up in such a place. However, Tsubasa dismisses the idea, finding the new location relaxing, even though he acknowledges being considered boring back in Tokyo. However, no one in this new place knows how boring Tsubasa is, and that brings him a sense of relief. As Minami continues to inquire, she discovers that Tsubasa is 16 years old, the same age as her. Excited by the coincidence, she reveals that she attends Hokuo High School. Overwhelmed with enthusiasm, she attaches herself to Tsubasa's arm, triggering alarms of embarrassment for the blushing protagonist. Tsubasa, flustered, is quick to explain that he feels cold, not realizing that the contact with Minami's two big airbags adds a layer of softness to his experience. In Tokyo, Tsubasa had never engaged with a girl like this, and he finds the experience wonderful. Lost in his thoughts, he begins to converse with Minami, but she mischievously slips snow inside his clothes. Minami bursts into laughter witnessing his comical reaction to the cold snow. After a few seconds of confusion, Tsubasa realizes it was just snow, but as he looks at Minami, he is captivated by her beautiful, happy face. Unable to contain himself, he blurts out loudly that she is very cute. Caught off guard by the compliment, Minami blushes but playfully hits Tsubasa on the shoulder. Despite the embarrassment, there's no awkwardness between them. Just as the moment unfolds, the bus arrives. Minami bids farewell, leaving Tsubasa in awe. Before she boards the bus, Tsubasa musters the courage to ask for her name. She replies with a smile, Minami Fuyu. Tsubasa, still in shock, watches as the bus departs without him, realizing he missed it. Despite this mishap, he feels happy to have moved to Hokkaido. However, the joy is short-lived when he receives a message from his father asking if he's home yet. This sudden realization hits him hard, and he screams in pain, understanding the gravity of the situation. While on the bus, Minami expresses her hope that Tsubasa will join her class. The scene shifts to Tsubasa's first day of school, where he introduces himself to the class. Not finding Minami in his class, he assumes she must be in another one. Tsubasa rationalizes that Minami's surprise during their encounter was due to not having met someone like him before. To his surprise, Minami enters the classroom, and their eyes meet. She greets him warmly, and they end up in the same class, with Minami sitting next to Tsubasa. Her friendly demeanor catches him off guard. Later, Minami casually calls him by his first name, breaking the formality Tsubasa is accustomed to. This adds to his shock as only family and close friends use his first name. During class, Tsubasa realizes how cold the room is when he notices others wearing blazers and blankets. Minami, noticing his discomfort, lends him her blanket, explaining that she easily gets sick. Touched by her kindness, Tsubasa appreciates the warmth and fragrance of the blanket. His imagination runs wild, and he becomes frustrated with his own hormones. At the end of the class, he returns the blanket, thanking Minami. 
embarrassed. Manami mentions that their scents have blended, heightening Tsubasa's embarrassment. She suggests there might be a way to thank her, teasingly hinting at something. After school, Tsubasa walks Minami home as a way of repaying the favor, and the two continue their unexpected journey together. Minami informs Tsubasa that she heads home by train, prompting them to make their way to the station. Suddenly, she curiously asks if he has a girlfriend, and Tsubasa responds with a resounding no, finding humor in the inquiry. Their conversation shifts to discussing date locations in Tokyo, surprising Minami with the variety the city offers. Tsubasa then explains that in Kitami, People don't go out for winter dates due to the cold. Instead, they prefer staying indoors at each other's houses. Upon reaching the station, Minami pauses and asks Tsubasa if he would like to come to her house the next day, as there are no classes, and she wants to learn more about Tokyo. Tsubasa agrees with some difficulty, reflecting on how they ended up in this situation. Perceiving his uneasiness, Minami asks if he doesn't want to come, but Tsubasa assures her that he does. Before parting ways, Minami requests Tsubasa's phone number, and with their goodbyes exchanged, she boards the train. The anticipated day arrives, and Tsubasa stands nervously in front of Minami's house, hoping her parents won't find out. Despite the potential consequences, the temptation is too great, and he rings the doorbell, seeking permission to enter. Minami, expressing luck that her parents are not home, leaves Tsubasa slightly confused and lost in his thoughts. Inside, Minami guides him to the living room, and as Tsubasa steps in, he feels the warmth emanating from the floor. She explains the underfloor heating and a massive radiator, highlighting the contrast with his small, cold room. Tsubasa begins to understand why she mentioned their luck regarding the absence of parents that day. Once settled in the room, Minami serves Tsubasa a drink while pouring one for herself. However, a little scream escapes her as she realizes the drinks were served too quickly, resulting in a mess. She turns around to show Tsubasa, who is now all stained. The sight nearly makes him wince in shock, and he feels like choking. Minami leaves the room to change, and Tsubasa manages to calm down gradually while breathing deeply. When she returns, he is taken aback to find her wearing much more revealing clothes. Tsubasa, feeling petrified, screams in his mind, My dark night is rising really hard, questioning why she changed. Minami explains that it's hot inside, and changing into more comfortable clothes upon arriving home is a usual practice for her. She then takes out a movie from her bag, eager to watch it. Tsubasa, feeling a bit calmer, agrees to watch it with her. However, he can barely look at her chicks, feeling like she's a tempting figure that he should avoid. As they watch the movie, a risky scene unfolds, making Tsubasa uncomfortable. He hesitates to move forward as it might seem strange to Minami. Suddenly, strange sounds emanate from Minami, giving Tsubasa peculiar ideas. Adding to the awkwardness, she starts touching him with her foot, increasing his alarm. When he finally turns to check on her, he realizes she's fast asleep on the couch, sighing with relief. Reflecting on the situation, Tsubasa wonders if he let his guard down too quickly, questioning how someone can fall asleep with a guy in front of them. He realizes that Minami doesn't see him as a man, a realization that brings a tinge of sadness. After Minami wakes up, she inquires about the movie. Tsubasa, wanting to spare her sleep, replies that it's already over and that she was sleeping so well that he didn't want to wake her. He informs her that he'll leave the Blu-ray, and she can watch it whenever she likes. As he prepares to leave, Minami notices something on top of his coat and asks what it is. Tsubasa explains that despite the warmth inside, he thought he might catch a cold if he didn't wear it. He chuckles, returning the coat and expressing that it's getting dark, signaling that it's time for him to leave. Grateful for his visit, Minami thanks him, and as he steps out, she chases him to stop him, apologizing for falling asleep. Despite her apology, Tsubasa kindly covers her with his scarf, behaving like a true gentleman. Concerned about why he's dressed like that, he explains that it's to avoid catching a cold. Minami feels a mix of embarrassment and gratitude, expressing that the scarf is very warm. Suddenly, she sneezes, and Tsubasa, holding her hand, suggests they go to Seiko Mart for some food. Running happily hand in hand, they arrive at the store, enjoying a meal together. The shopkeeper informs them that the onigiri they sell is prepared on site, offering one for Tsubasa to try. When she notices rice on Tsubasa's cheek, she instinctively takes it off with her finger and eat it like she really want his protein. On a fresh day at school, Minami catches Tsubasa off guard as she notices him engrossed in a poster on the wall promoting the upcoming winter festival. Tsubasa, taken aback, mentions that the event is scheduled for the next weekend and contemplates attending. Undeterred, Minami insists on joining him, leaving Tsubasa with little choice but to agree. 
As the day progresses, Manami excitedly shares her plans with her family during dinner, expressing her anticipation for the winter festival, a tradition from her elementary school days. However, a hint of concern crosses her face when she stumbles upon a photo of the event. Later, Manami messages Tsubasa about meeting at the station at 11 the next day. Tsubasa, musing about the prospect of going to the festival with a girl, realizes the potential romantic nature of the outing but tempers his excitement, acknowledging the need to stay composed. On the day of the festival, Tsubasa eagerly awaits Minami at the agreed-upon location. When she finally arrives, he is taken aback by her choice of attire, finding her unexpectedly hot. In his thoughts, he notes how effortlessly casual she always appears, only adding to her charm. Despite the initial surprise, Riz God relaxes and asks Minami if she had attended winter festivals during her primary school years. She responds that it's been a long time since those days. While taking in the winter wonders of the festival, Tsubasa expresses his excitement about the snow statues and ice sculptures unique to Hokkaido, highlighting the things that set the region apart. As they explore, he meticulously plans their food stall adventure, but Minami, in a hushed voice, admits she's unsure. Undeterred, she becomes increasingly enthusiastic, her excitement bubbling over. Upon arriving at the festival, Tsubasa is captivated by the surroundings, urging Minami to explore further. She agrees with even more enthusiasm, and as they walk, Tsubasa is awestruck by the colossal sculptures. Attempting to capture the moment, he suggests taking a photo, and Minami leans towards him and holds his hand. Tsubasa is momentarily stunned by her beauty, and after the snapshot, Minami notices his amused expression, clueless to the effect she has on him. They decide to grab a bite, and Tsubasa orders a hot dog. Playfully, Minami opens her mouth to taste his hot dog, and he gave it to her. While savoring the hot dog, Tsubasa realizes the potential for an indirect kiss but chooses to eat it anyway. Meanwhile, Minami watches him with a mischievous smile, remarking on Tsubasa's predictability. Participating in various festival activities, they share laughter and enjoy each other's company. Afterward, they cozy up with hot drinks, and Minami seizes the opportunity to ask Tsubasa about his thoughts on the festival. He expresses his delight in the snow and ice, emphasizing the stark difference from Tokyo, where he lived. Grateful for the day, Tsubasa thanks Minami for accompanying him, acknowledging the joy and fun they shared together. As Minami blushes, she candidly admits to Tsubasa that she was anxious about their day together. The last time she attended the festival, she was still in elementary school and had a great time, but uncertainty lingered about whether today's experience would be as enjoyable. She had worried about disappointing him but is relieved to discover that her concerns were unfounded. Tsubasa's company has deepened her love for Hokkaido, and she fondly reminisces about the city, realizing how much she enjoys it. Witnessing him having fun brings her immense happiness, and she expresses gratitude for sharing the festival with him. Their pleasant conversation takes an unexpected turn when, due to Minami's misstep, she almost slips. In a swift and instinctive move, Riz God catches her in his arms, like a K-drama movie. For a moment, their faces and lips are mere inches apart, a close encounter that catches them both off guard. After a brief but charged pause, Tsubasa swiftly separates, apologizing for the unintentional proximity. Minami assures him she's fine and appreciates his quick response. As they leave the festival, Tsubasa suggests going somewhere else another day. Intrigued, Minami questions his eagerness, teasingly asking why he's so insistent on going alone. Despite feeling bashful, Tsubasa admits he'd like to visit the Sapporo Snow Festival together on another occasion. The next day at school, Minami, abruptly breaking away, invites Tsubasa to eat together. She surprises him with instant noodles, explaining that high school life makes even ordinary meals taste better. Knowing that Tokyo might lack such noodles, she bought them for him, delighted by his reaction. She expresses a desire to familiarize Tsubasa with Hokkaido cuisine. She takes charge of preparing instant noodles, showcasing a simple yet delicious dish. Following the package instructions, she uses hot water and patiently waits for the noodles to be ready in just three minutes. Minami then explains that the noodles come with a Chinese soup broth, encouraging Tsubasa to use the leftover water to make soup. Despite Tsubasa's initial impression of Minami as someone who enjoys junk food, the aroma and presentation of the dish spark his hunger. Using chopsticks, Minami picks up a portion and brings it to Tsubasa's mouth. He finds it surprisingly delicious, and Minami notes that it compensates for the winter festival mishap. Playfully, she brings up the earlier blushing incident, asking if Tsubasa got excited thinking about it. He deflects the question by mentioning burning yakisoba. Changing the topic, Minami inquires about what Tsubasa brought for lunch, excitedly comparing it to a New Year's feast. 
Tsubasa offers her a taste, and she's pleased with its deliciousness, prompting her to inquire about its origin. Tsubasa reveals it's his grandmother's stew, and after finishing the meal, he thanks Manami, expressing appreciation for the tasty experience. During their conversation, Manami asks Tsubasa about his background, questioning if he's a rich and pampered kid. Before he can clarify, she swiftly asks if he can come to her house after school. As they head in the direction of his home, Tsubasa reflects on the earlier moment, wondering about the impressive angle from which Minami posed her question. He also recalls her curiosity about what he could do, considering his grandmother's presence at home. Suddenly, Minami calls Tsubasa over to check out something exciting, a mound of snow. Once she's inside, the confined space makes it awkward for Tsubasa to look around. Unexpectedly, Minami grabs his wrist, inviting him inside. The cramped space creates a tight situation, and Minami, seemingly oblivious to the discomfort, asks Tsubasa if this is his first time in such a setting. Tsubasa hesitantly confirms, but I bet he likes this shit, and Minami remarks on the warmth inside, urging him to come even closer while making unusual noises. Perplexed and trying to keep the situation from becoming too awkward, Tsubasa wonders about Minami's actions. Just as they about to clap, voices emanate from outside prompting both to look who it is. To their surprise, Tsubasa's grandmother is there, questioning what the fuck were they doing inside. She suggests that maybe she heard some noises, hinting at an inappropriate conversation. Feeling nervous and desperate to explain, Tsubasa struggles for an excuse when Minami intervenes. She nonchalantly claims they were just enjoying themselves quickly. The unexpected response leaves Tsubasa in shock, and even his grandmother is taken aback by the bold explanation. After the awkward encounter, Minami introduces herself to Grandma, and shares that she loved the lunch that Grandma prepared for Tsubasa, which Minami found delicious and almost divine. Tsubasa's Grandma thanks Minami for the compliments and turns the conversation to how they know each other. When asked, Minami tries to casually explain that they are friends. Tsubasa quickly interrupts Minami, clarifying that they are classmates, not companions. His grandmother, sensing the need to leave due to an important appointment with Tsubasa's mother, apologizes to Minami for the abrupt departure, attributing it to the sudden snowfall. Tsubasa, anticipating that the encounter wouldn't end well, feels helpless, knowing that his grandmother dislikes expressive relationships, assuming it marks the end of his new life in Hokkaido. However, Minami suddenly reappears from behind, asking them to wait. She points out that Tsubasa's grandmother is using an umbrella in the snow, cautioning against it due to the risk of slipping. Minami suggests removing snow by hand and explains the potential dangers. Grandma, attentive to her advice, removes the snow. Minami then asks Tsubasa about the direction to his home, and when he mentions it, she warns them about a slippery step ahead. She offers to guide them through a faster and safer route, showing them an alternative path. Minami takes the opportunity to tell Tsubasa's grandmother that she makes exquisite food and emphasizes the importance of taking care of her hands. The grandmother appreciates the sentiment, and Minami offers to carry her belongings, an offer she accepts before leaving. As they part ways, Tsubasa asks Minami if she is angry about something, to which she replies that it's difficult to discuss in front of his grandmother. Minami confesses that she considers him an important friend, leading to an awkward yet charming moment. Upon arriving at Tsubasa's house, Minami is impressed by its size. However, realizing she have an appointment, she decides to bid farewell. Tsubasa's grandmother, grateful for Minami's assistance, invites them in for a warm tea. While Minami eagerly accepts, the grandmother notices Minami's enthusiastic photography, prompting her to hide and spy on her antics. Remembering Tsubasa's childhood and seeing him smile genuinely, she reflects on his growth and acknowledges him as a sincere and kind young man. On another school day, they receive instructions for the upcoming ski class. Tsubasa, looking at the map, finds himself seated behind Minami, realizing that Sayuri is also nearby, who is also a hot gal, bringing the episode to an end. The day arrives for a skiing trip, and Minami is visibly excited about it. Tsubasa, on the other hand, considers it a typical Hokkaido activity, anticipating a day of skiing instead of the usual classes. Curious, Minami asks Tsubasa if he has ever skied before. Tsubasa admits that he has never done it and is a bit worried about it. Seizing the opportunity to tease him, Minami playfully mocks Tsubasa, revealing that she has been skiing since elementary school, and finds it amusing to see him concerned. As the conversation continues, Tsubasa realizes that people from Hokkaido are generally adept at handling snow, 
but he is unfamiliar with it, having lived in Tokyo where it rarely snows. Meanwhile, Manami remains distracted as she observes Sayuri sitting next to Tsubasa. After a few moments, Manami quietly asks Sayuri if she's looking forward to skiing. But Sayuri doesn't provide a clear response, making Manami feel a bit uneasy. Assuming that Sayuri probably does want to ski, Manami glances away. Tsubasa, observing Manami's interactions, finds it strange that Manami seems to get along well with everyone. He wonders if something happened between Manami and Sayuri. In a hushed tone, Manami assures Tsubasa that everything is mostly fine and shares that she has been trying to befriend Sayuri for a long time. Despite never having any arguments or disagreements, Manami admires Sayuri's traits, her cute hairstyle, elegant movements, and delicate yet stylish appearance. Manami expresses her desire to continue being friends with Sayuri, asking Tsubasa to take a closer look at Sayuri, appreciating her as a charming and elegant girl with dark hair. Tsubasa continues to gaze at Sayuri, convinced of her beauty. However, Manami notices this and returns to her seat, slightly annoyed. <laughs> Women. <laughs> Upon reaching their destination, the assigned teacher instructs everyone to divide into classes A, B, and C based on their skiing abilities. Following their respective class assignments, the teacher approaches Tsubasa upon learning that he doesn't know how to ski. The teacher explains that class C will take the chairlift up and ski down a bit. Tsubasa, thinking he should start on a flat surface to practice, suggests this to the teacher. The teacher agrees, asking Tsubasa to go with Sayuri for a special beginner's class since she also seems unfamiliar with skiing. The teacher will oversee class C and won't be able to keep an eye on them, but he promises to check in on them occasionally. As Tsubasa contemplates this opportunity to talk to Sayuri and possibly ease tensions between her and Minami, he first asks if she'd like to go together. However, he notices that Sayuri puts on headphones, interpreting it as a signal that she doesn't want to be disturbed. Respecting her space, Tsubasa decides not to press her. Observing Sayuri slowly making her way with skis on, Tsubasa decides to follow suit. Later on, Sayuri stumbles and our simp quickly rushes over, concerned, to see if he can help. However, Sayuri manages to get up on her own, loudly questioning the point of learning to ski suddenly. Someone shouts Tsubasa's name, and Minami arrives, skillfully jumping in on skis to showcase her abilities in the sport. Tsubasa can't help but praise her for how awesome she looks. However, within seconds, Minami gets scolded by the teacher and bids them farewell as she joins her class. Once alone again, Sayuri asks Tsubasa if he's clapping Minami, catching him off guard. He promptly denies it, curious about why she's asking. Sayuri explains that it's because they were talking a lot on the bus. Tsubasa clarifies that Manami was just teasing him, but in Sayuri's opinion, there seemed to be something more to it. She describes Minami as the typical popular and perfect girl, loud, outgoing, and a partygoer. Sayuri contrasts herself, noting that Manami has everything she doesn't. Later, the teacher apologizes, explaining that he was busy with Class A and he couldn't come to help them. Tsubasa reassures him not to worry and asks what time lunch break is. The teacher responds that most students are already resting, making it clear that he genuinely forgot about them. Shortly after, Tsubasa is on the bus with Sayuri, thinking people would think they're clapping in bus. So, he decides to eat his lunch inside the building. He realizes that the chopsticks are still in his backpack and goes back to the bus to retrieve them quickly. As he walks down the aisle, the next thing he sees is Sayuri wiping off her hot sweat, revealing much more than she should. This leaves them both in shock for such an embarrassing moment. After several seconds, Tsubasa manages to react, turning around to apologize. In his mind, he wonders if she was changing and thought nothing would happen because no one was around. Unsure of what to do after seeing too much, he sincerely apologizes, promising to forget what he saw and only use his hands at night. He clarifies that he's there because he accidentally left his chopsticks in his backpack and came back for them, seeking permission to take them. When Sayuri doesn't respond, he assumes she's not okay with it. Before leaving, she stops him, turning to face her fully clothed. Sayuri tells him that he should explain and they can do it while having lunch. After that, they eat together on the bus. After a few long minutes, she tells him that she'll be straightforward and asks him to listen. It turns out that she sweats a lot, and she's always been embarrassed about it, so she avoids sports. But lately, she started falling behind, struggling with many things. She lost confidence and, without realizing it, began avoiding people. Sometimes, she thought things were going really wrong and pushed herself a bit more, like today with skiing. 
However, he caught her trying to dry off, which turned into a disaster. She takes the blame for being so careless. Subasa asks her why she's sharing all this information, especially since they just met and never talked before. He considers it quite personal. Sayuri responds that it's easier for her because he doesn't know anything about her. It's less challenging to talk to him, asking him to understand that they are both in the same situation. They are both sitting alone, without friends, and the newcomer is sitting with her. Tsubasa acknowledges that it's complicated, and Sayuri jokingly says it's nice to be the new one, making Tsubasa smile. Tsubasa wonders if she's concerned that he might spread this information to mock her. Suddenly, there's a notification from Sayuri's backpack. Seeing that she's not doing anything about it, Tsubasa tells her not to worry and suggests checking it. Sayuri takes out a device, and when Tsubasa asks if it's a tablet, she explains that she recently got back into playing 6 plus SP on the Shua Witch. Noticing Tsubasa's unfamiliarity with the game, she gives him a serious look and explains that it's a fighting game with famous characters. As it turns out, Tsubasa doesn't play many video games. Sayuri encourages him to give it a try, teaching him how to use the controls gradually. She enthusiastically talks about the game, but after a while, she realizes that her plot is touching him and apologizes for it. She acknowledges that she sounds silly when she gets like this. Tsubasa assures her that he doesn't think that way. Sayuri confesses that she wants to get along with people, so she puts effort into presenting herself well. However, this is the real her, and people always get scared before they can approach, leading her to run away and seek refuge in the one thing she masters, video games. She considers herself pathetic for it. In response, our simp disagrees, finding it amazing that she puts in so much effort. He believes her personality and appearance are unique and fantastic, expressing his joy at getting to know her. He thanks her for talking to him, making Sayuri blush and look away. She questions how he can say such embarrassing things. As Tsubasa continues praising her gaming skills, he asks if she could teach him since he wants to play with her. Sayuri is convinced and agrees to his request but they need to call the teacher first. She takes out the console, shows him how to navigate the game, and impresses Tsubasa. She explains that the moves aren't too complicated, so he can do it if he tries. Tsubasa puts in effort, pressing buttons and controls enthusiastically. After a few seconds, he achieves a victory, and Sayuri is happy for him. She mentions that it was the weakest CPU opponent, but Tsubasa remains in high spirits. They realize it's late when they check the time and decide to leave quickly. Once outside, they hurriedly make their way out. Sayuri remembers that the teacher told them to take it easy, but Tsubasa asks her if she would like to ski with him. She appears hesitant, but Tsubasa tells her it will be like in the game, and they might achieve something if they try. Later on, Minami wonders what she should do now. When she turns around, she's surprised to see Tsubasa and Sayuri heading up the mountain. Due to the height, both of them seem a bit nervous. Tsubasa is amazed at the enormous size of the resort from up there. Sayuri asks him why he wants to ski, reminding him that the teacher said not to push himself. Tsubasa shares that he was challenging himself, finding it incredible, and mentions that it was Minami who inspired him to decide. She was his first friend since he moved, introducing him to various foods and showing him new places. He recalls that she was skiing exceptionally well today. Listening to their conversation, Sayuri asks Tsubasa why he wants to ski, prompting him to deny any romantic feelings for Minami, embarrassed and nervous. He insists that they are just friends. However, Sayuri points out that his strong denial suggests otherwise and mentions that it's normal since everyone idolizes Minami. She even admits that Minami sometimes talks to her. Due to Sayuri's straightforward nature, she begins to suspect something and wonders why Tsubasa is acting this way, unsure of how to respond. Before Tsubasa can say anything, Sayuri informs them that they've arrived and need to descend. As they stand together on that small peak, they are impressed by the beautiful view of the horizon. Tsubasa turns to her, wanting to ask her a favor. He proposes that if he manages to descend without falling even once, Sayuri should tell him what Minami really wants. He reveals that Minami wants to be friends, not just for her sake but also because he genuinely wants them to be good friends. Sayuri is a bit embarrassed but agrees with a condition, Tsubasa must not dare to leave her behind. Happy to hear that, he clarifies that he won't, and they both descend the mountain together. During the descent, Sayuri recalls Tsubasa's advice on how to go slow, shifting the center of gravity forward, pointing the skis towards them, and moving from side to side. Following his guidance, she finally starts moving slowly. On the other hand, Tsubasa maintains his concentration to ski and, with some difficulty, manages to break further down. He is glad to be learning. Suddenly, he hears someone calling Tsubasa's name from behind. 
and when he turn around, they see Sayuri speeding down. She wonders how to stop and realizes he forgot to teach her how to do it. Tsubasa, noticing the situation, shouts at her to make a wedge with the skis. Seeing that she isn't listening, he opts to stop her himself. However, before he can do anything, Minami rushes to Sayuri's side, explaining that if she pulls on the skis and falls backward to the side, she can safely stop without hurting too much. She'll show her how to do it, and all she has to do is imitate her. Sayuri agrees, and in the end, they both end up lying in the snow. Shortly afterward, Tsubasa also arrives, and the teacher scolds both of them for skiing alone without permission. Tsubasa decides to talk to the teacher, and Sayuri tries to go as well, but Tsubasa stops her, explaining that he brought her into this and nearly got her hurt, so he will take the responsibility and punishment. Minami laughs at how he apologizes so much to the teacher. Meanwhile, Sayuri, after thinking for a moment, thanks Minami for helping her and apologizes for being cold towards her. Minami is happy to hear these words and readily accepts her apology. On the bus, Minami talks about becoming friends with Sayuri and having a great time, calling it a perfect day. However, she notices Tsubasa and Sayuri sitting closely together behind her. Pouting, she wonders why they don't interact with her more. Later on, it's revealed that Tsubasa and Sayuri are sleeping in their seats, a normal sight after such an exhausting day. The next day, Tsubasa is about to head to school, unsure if he can make it through the massive snowstorm outside especially with the muscle soreness from skiing the day before causing him immense pain throughout his body. Approaching his grandmother, he hears that Hokkaido will test his determination, urging him to endure the blizzard to become a true citizen. Despite his determination, as he steps out, the extreme cold renders him nearly speechless. Feeling the immense pain from the harsh environment, he thinks about how Minami is probably attending school effortlessly. Suddenly, a car approaches, taking him by surprise. Overwhelmed, he collapses into the snow, accepting his impending fate. As he thinks he's about to die, his life flashes before his eyes, bidding farewell to Hokkaido. At that moment, Minami, appearing in the flesh, questions what he's doing, insisting he can't walk in such a snowstorm. She drags him into the car, despite his complaints about the pain in his body. Inside the car, Minami's mother remarks on the extremely cold day, advising Tsubasa to relax. Tsubasa is astonished to see that Minami's mommy is identical to her, and even hotter. Minami reveals that Tsubasa leaves in a mansion, making the car seem tiny to him. Despite his denial, Minami's mother realizes he's the young master of Minami. Minami continues chatting with Tsubasa, painting a picture of their journey ahead. And if she had known, Minami's mother would have done a better job of putting on makeup. Suddenly, the mother asks Tsubasa if he has a girlfriend in Tokyo, but Minami reaches out to touch his shoulder, causing him to react to the pain. He tells both of them that it's just muscle soreness from using muscles in skiing that he didn't even know existed. Minami is surprised and realizes she should be more delicate with him. The mommy attributes Minami's endurance and stamina, claiming she could go all day without getting tired. Returning to the previous topic, Tsubasa responds that he doesn't have a girlfriend, prompting his mother to express pity and then ask what he thinks of her daughter. Minami, embarrassed, asks her to stop as she's embarrassing her. Despite Minami's request, his mother continues to praise Tsubasa, suggesting they would make a lovely couple. Minami gives her an angry look, causing his mother to relax and mention that she was just excited to meet him. Tsubasa notes that Minami gets angry in that way, but it doesn't scare him. Nevertheless, he should still be careful. Changing the subject, Minami's mother talks about how Tsubasa, being from Tokyo, must find the local weather surprising. Tsubasa agrees and wonders why the school hasn't closed. Minami explains that locals are accustomed to the cold, and her mother adds that many children go to school with their parents, especially in winter. Minami mentions her desire to look cute and wear less clothing but the winter cold prevents her from doing so. They discuss the high cost of winter clothing, and Minami, unable to afford what she likes with her allowance, expresses her desire to work. However, her mother and father advise her that she's still too young. Observing them, Tsubasa thinks they look like a close-knit family, imagining the challenges of being a local in Hokkaido. Unintentionally, he praises them for looking cute in their current attire, shocking both Minami and her mother, who blush in embarrassment. Tsubasa apologizes for his inadvertent comment. Later, they arrive at the school entrance, and Minami's mother asks Tsubasa if their houses are close. He replies that they're about a 10-minute walk away. She suggests that if he sees a blizzard like today, he should contact Minami and she could give him a ride. After thanking her, Minami's mother compliments Tsubasa on his handling of the situation. 
Minami, still embarrassed, replies that he only did a little well. As they enter the school, Minami's mother reflects on how even in winter, with a blizzard, it still feels like spring for others. In the hallway, Tsubasa continues to endure the pain and notices Sayuri approaching. Minami rushes to hug her, despite Sayuri being in pain herself. Tsubasa realizes that Sayuri also has muscle soreness, indicating that he's in the same situation. In the classroom, Minami notices Tsubasa wearing the cardigan and blanket she lent him. She asks him what he thinks about it, revealing her jacket and showing off her plot warmer, wondering if he wears any. Tsubasa is taken by surprise, avoiding eye contact, and replies that he doesn't. He now understands why Minami can wear light clothes. She hands him a pair of plot warmers, emphasizing how serious the cold in Hokkaido can be. When Tsubasa holds the plot warmers, he reflects on the unexpected friendship with Minami, something he couldn't have imagined in Tokyo. Minami suggests he should buy a lipstick, to which Tsubasa advises her to do it after class using the Hokkaido dialect, surprising Minami as she realizes he is already picking up the local way of speaking. She expresses joy, confirming that he's becoming a local like them. Sayuri joins them, telling Tsubasa not to take Minami as a role model, mentioning Minami's exceptional qualities. Minami, curious, asks Sayuri what she's talking about. Sayuri responds that she's also 100% laid back but doesn't use many regional idioms, nor does she have an accent. She admits she's not good at skiing or winter sports, but there are many like her. Tsubasa realizes that Minami's family from Sapporo uses Hokkaido idioms, while most of Sayuri's family doesn't, except for her grandparents. Tsubasa thinks this probably depends on location, family, and age. He notices the handheld console in Sayuri's hands, and she excitedly suggests playing together. Tsubasa eagerly agrees, loudly expressing his desire to play with her, embarrassing Sayuri. She turns away, quietly commenting that he's too innocent, though Tsubasa remains oblivious. He invites Minami to join them, and she gladly agrees. The three of them make plans to meet at Tabu after class. Later, they find themselves in front of Tabu, a shopping center. They show Tsubasa around the fashion and dining sections, as well as a mini supermarket with a variety of meat. Tsubasa is surprised by the size of the place, noting that it doesn't look like a typical shopping center, with more space and less noise, allowing for a calmer atmosphere. The trio encourages Minami as she plays a game on the console, and after securing a victory, she celebrates with Sayuri. When Tsubasa heads to the bathroom, Minami asks Sayuri if she wants to check out cosmetics, affectionately calling her Orin. Sayuri, embarrassed by the nickname, eventually agrees to accompany Minami to see the cosmetics section. Talking about the expensive cost of colored contact lenses, Sayuri suggests they could buy them together. After discussing it, Sayuri tells Minami that she's a very pleasant girl, and apologizes for being so serious with her in high school. Minami is surprised by this admission and can't help but feel embarrassed. She clarifies that it never bothered her. Tsubasa rejoins them, and they continue with various activities throughout the day, enjoying their time together. After finishing their shopping, Minami mentions buying the shampoo Tsubasa recommended, while Sayuri purchased the contact lenses he approved of. Tsubasa realizes it's getting late and suggests they should leave. However, Minami takes the opportunity to enter a photo booth, capturing a moment between the three of them. As night falls, Tsubasa wonders if they have to submit their English assignment the next day. Deciding to ask Minami, he checks the back of his phone, enjoying the photo they took. Just as he is about to message her, he receives a response from Minami, informing him that she's in the bathroom. Before he can reply, she sends him a photo from the bathtub, innocently showing her toy and not revealing anything explicit. Tsubasa responds by commenting on the durability of her toy and apologizing for any inconvenience. Minami, finding the situation not as amusing as she expected, decides to spice things up with a more provocative photo, sending a top camera angle photo, leaving Tsubasa in shock. She thinks she may have gone too far but anticipates a better reaction. Within moments, Tsubasa responds with another message. Tsubasa responds to Minami, teasing her about taking her beauty routine seriously and mentioning that her effort in that photo reveals her big mommy airbags. Meanwhile, Tsubasa is frustrated, wondering if his response was the right one to Minami's previous photo. He hears the phone ring, realizing it's a call from Minami. Contemplating whether to answer or not, he decides to pick up, realizing that ignoring her, his initial rational option, is no longer viable. Minami asks if he's watching her, making Tsubasa look at his phone, only to discover that she has initiated a video call. Nervous, he notices his camera isn't even on, meaning she can't see him. Minami laughs, having successfully embarrassed him. 
Tsubasa turns the phone upside down to speak more comfortably. Minami casually asks if he bathes daily, to which he answers yes. She reveals that in her house, apart from her and her mother, they usually bathe every two days due to concerns about rising bills. She suggests going to hot springs, playfully mentioning they could bathe together and rub soaps on each other. Tsubasa realizes she's just teasing him. Remembering the English assignment, he asks Minami about it, and she realizes she hasn't done anything. Shocked, she loses balance, dropping her phone. Tsubasa also fumbles with his phone, accidentally pointing the camera towards Minami's shining body as they catch their devices. Minami asks if he saw everything, but Tsubasa claims he saw nothing, as he was focused on catching his falling phone. Embarrassed, Minami hastily ends the call, and as she gets out of the bath, she reflects on the situation, acknowledging that she may have crossed the line with the unexpected video call. The next day, Minami fails to submit the assignment on time, and the teacher scolds her severely for it. On a new day, the kids find themselves at the karaoke with their classmates. Minami impresses everyone with her singing skills, leaving Tsubasa amazed by her beauty. In the end, both Tsubasa and Sayuri appreciate how well she sings. When one of her friends points out that Minami always sings the same karaoke song, Minami explains that it's because she loves that song as it always lifts her spirits. Sayuri asks Tsubasa if he goes to karaoke often, and he admits that he has only been a couple of times with his family. Tsubasa is nervous but grateful that Minami invited him. On the other hand, Sayuri reveals that she goes to karaoke frequently, but always alone. Tsubasa, feeling a bit awkward, tells her that everyone has their own preferences, and he finds it great. Later, the classmates ask Tsubasa and Minami to choose a song but they feel uncomfortable. Minami takes charge and decides to choose songs for both of them, and they appreciate her help. After singing, the boys discuss the upcoming exams, while the girls talk about Valentine's Day at the other end of the table. Minami loudly announces that Valentine's Day is approaching, creating a tense atmosphere. Some boys claim not to be interested, but when the girls mention giving friendship chocolates, the boys show excitement. Tsubasa wonders if Minami will give chocolates to someone, and a boy asks her for chocolates. Minami agrees without hesitation, stating that she will prepare a lot this year, and her friend asks how much she made last year, and she replies that she made about 60 chocolates, distributing them as if it were lunch. For a moment, Tsubasa feels a bit uneasy, but upon hearing that she gives chocolates to everyone, he feels more at ease. However, he later wonders why he felt so relieved. After understanding what they meant, one of the girls asks Sayuri if she enjoys making chocolates. Sayuri responds that she doesn't, preferring to save money and spend it on her hobbies. The boys ask Tsubasa if he received chocolates in Tokyo, and he answers that he has only received chocolates from his family. While they talk about it, Minami and Sayuri listen attentively. As it gets late, everyone says their goodbyes and goes their separate ways. Tsubasa reflects on how much he enjoyed talking with the others and is glad he came at that moment. Sayuri and Minami both talk to Tsubasa at the same time, and realizing this, Minami speaks first, asking if he had fun. Like Sayuri, they both respond positively, making Minami happy. She expresses her desire to invite them again the next day. Later, Tsubasa asks Sayuri if she wanted to say something too, but she replies that it's nothing important. In the end, Minami lets Tsubasa know that he's good at singing. Sayuri pauses to fall behind them while checking her phone where she has a page open explaining 10 questions to determine the type of chocolate the other person would like, themed for Valentine's Day. Later, in her room, she realizes that the date is approaching and, feeling frustrated, decides to go to the mall. Once there, she heads to the store that sells chocolates and all sorts of Valentine's Day-related items. Suddenly surprised by Minami, she asks what she's doing there. Minami replies that she came to buy ingredients for chocolate and returns the same question to Sayuri. Sayuri responds that she came for nail polish as hers is peeling off, but Minami notices that her nails are perfect. Before Minami can guess that Sayuri came for Valentine's Day items, Sayuri quickly clarifies that she came for cosmetics and that Minami could help her with that. This convinces Minami, who is happy to be of help. After shopping, Minami comments that she really likes the Valentine's Day themed aisle and then asks Sayuri what kind of chocolate she likes. Hearing that she likes ganache, Minami gets excited, sharing that she always buys Royce's Nama chocolate when she goes to a certain store. Seeing the time, she realizes she needs to leave and says goodbye to Sayuri. Before parting ways, with a bit of difficulty, Sayuri asks if she can go shopping with Minami. While doing so, she gets embarrassed and clarifies that it's not because she wants to make chocolates for herself. Minami is delighted to hear that, assuring her that she will make fantastic chocolates for her. 
After finishing the shopping outside, Manami asks if she can call them and if they need help before leaving. Taking courage, Sayuri asks Manami if she doesn't want to give Tsubasa real chocolate, the love chocolate. This direct question results in several seconds of silence. After that, Manami asks why she's mentioning Tsubasa. Sayuri explains that they spend a lot of time together, but Manami clarifies that it's because they're friends. And she also considers Sayuri a friend. Sayuri acknowledges that it's true, but they only play console games together. With a silence lingering in the air, Sayuri apologizes for asking such a question, but Minami assures her not to worry and that it just surprised her a bit. After this conversation, the two part ways, each contemplating what kind of chocolate to give Tsubasa. Now with Tsubasa, he remains occupied with studies, avoiding getting his hopes up for Valentine's Day, which is happening the next day. That same night, Manami writes to Sayuri to see if she's still awake, letting her know that she almost finished her chocolate and asking how things are going for her. Sayuri responds that she's just starting now, and Manami can't resist calling her, marking their first phone conversation. During the call, Sayuri takes the opportunity to ask Manami for the best way to make chocolate, preferring something uncomplicated. With gaming skills in mind, Manami guides her through the process. She first instructs her to use a knife to chop the chocolate into pieces, which Sayuri does smoothly, thanks to her gaming button pressing skills. Next, she tells Sayuri to take the cream she bought today and pour it into a bowl, then heat it in a double boiler. Seeing that Sayuri is unfamiliar with the term, Manami explains that a double boiler is when you boil water in one container and place another container with the ingredient inside it. Sayuri follows the instructions, maintaining a good rhythm and perfect button pressing skills. Minami then advises her to use half of the cream in proportion to the chocolate. However, when Sayuri adds it without measuring, Minami tells her to turn off the heat, add the chocolate, and slowly stir as it melts. She instructs her to let it cool in the fridge for a few hours and shape it as desired. Now, only the cocoa powder remains in the process. Finishing that, Sayuri lets Minami know that it was very easy and asks how things are going for her. Minami responds that Sayuri will have to wait until tomorrow, indicating that she has already finished all her chocolate, setting a new record of 70. She explains that she is excited because everyone is happy and likes to see their reactions to her well-made chocolates. Then she asks Sayuri whom she was thinking about when making her chocolate, surprising her. Sayuri reminds her that she wants to give chocolates to Minami, and Minami is happy to hear that. Still, she asks if Sayuri will give chocolate to someone else besides her, mentioning that she has been thinking about Tsubasa and Sayuri. Just before Sayuri can ask if she likes Tsubasa, she accidentally hits the milk carton, triggering a chain reaction that creates a complete mess. Sayuri is alarmed by the noise and asks if Minami is okay. However, Minami is in shock, seeing all her chocolates ruined, including the heart-shaped chocolate. She informs Sayuri that she spilled condiments and a bottle of soy sauce on the chocolate, and nothing is salvageable due to being soaked in soy sauce. Minami admits it's her fault for not organizing beforehand, telling Sayuri that she has to clean up. After saying goodbye, she ends the call. Sayuri is quite worried for her and receives a message from Minami seconds later, wishing her good luck and marveling at how kind Minami can be. Valentine's Day arrives, and Tsubasa opens his locker with hope, only to find nothing, which he expected. In the classroom, Minami greets him, and he notices that her eyes are red and swollen. Minami tenderly gives him a store-bought chocolate, letting him know they are delicious. Tsubasa shows extreme happiness, thanking her. Despite Tsubasa's surprised expression, Minami maintains her smile. At that moment, Sayuri enters the classroom, and taking advantage, Minami approaches her to give her another one of those chocolates. However, upon seeing this, Sayuri stares at Minami, fully aware of what happened the previous night. Another boy in the classroom asks Minami for her eagerly awaited chocolate, but upon realizing it's not homemade, he expresses disappointment. Despite those painful words, Minami maintains her cheerful demeanor. Observing this, Tsubasa asks if something happened since she didn't prepare homemade chocolates this year. Sayuri, after hearing those cruel words from the classmate, takes the opportunity to approach the redhead when he's alone. She tells him that the next time he talks to Minami like that, he'll regret it, causing the boy to be terrified by the imposing fear he imposes. After classes, Minami and Tsubasa go to the music club to listen to them play. After finishing, they put away their things and find themselves alone. Tsubasa thanks her for the chocolate tin, which he will eat when he gets home. To his surprise, he sees Minami start to cry quite a bit. With kindness, he asks if she can tell him what happened. Sayuri, hiding outside the classroom, overhears the conversation. 
after Minami recounts what happened. She believes that she could have saved some chocolates, but they were either broken or had milk on them, and no one wanted to receive chocolates in that condition. However, she still wanted to give them the chocolates she had prepared, feeling that she had disappointed everyone and wanting to give hers to him. Her mother told her to organize beforehand, but she ignored her. Later, her mother said something over the phone that made her friend uncomfortable, assuming that it was her punishment. Seeing her in that state, Tsubasa also feels affected. The next thing he does is sit in front of the piano, thinking that he can't do more for her at the moment. That's when he starts playing a piece, displaying great control of his piano skills. Minami is amazed as she listens to him. When he finishes, he confirms that the song he played is the one she sang at the karaoke, mentioning that he studied piano, so he thought he could play it. Minami expresses how great it was and asks why he chose that song. Tsubasa tells her that it always cheers him up, so he wanted to do it for her this time. This lights up Minami's face as she remembers that she mentioned earlier that the song lifts her spirits. She begins to laugh, confessing that she is now very happy, and that he is the best. Recovered from her spirits, Sayuri enters the room to inform them that she has to distribute chocolates. Minami understands what she wants to do, so she excuses herself, saying she has something to do and leaves. But before she can exit through the door, Sayuri stops her, showing her that the chocolate is for her, reminding her that she promised to give her a friendship chocolate. This makes Minami extremely happy, telling Sayuri that she loves her and expressing various other joyful sentiments. Meanwhile, Tsubasa is internally struggling, thinking that the chocolate was meant for him, rolling in embarrassment. However, after a few seconds, Sayuri also gives him a chocolate, explaining that there was a bit left when she made Minami's. Tsubasa, with a bright expression, thanks her, and although it leaves her slightly embarrassed, Sayuri mentions that he played the piano wonderfully. Finally, Minami suggests eating those chocolates together, and the three of them spend a joyful time together. On another day of classes, the teacher announces to the class that exams will begin next week urging them to put in effort before that day arrives. His mind wanders, thinking he has already reviewed all the exam topics. So, if he revisits the difficult parts, he might improve. At that moment, he hears Minami's heavy sigh. She's dismayed because they just finished the trimester exams and now finals are already upon them. He opines that he doesn't dislike exams, but seeing their effort rewarded is satisfying to him. This surprises Minami because she's never heard anyone speak positively about exams before, finding it refreshing considering how great he is. This excitement encourages her to want to study. Later, she asks if he has time and invites him to study at her place, to which he agrees. Later, they go to Minami's house where Sayuri is also invited because Minami believes it will be more fun with more people. She also mentions that having Tsubasa will be helpful as he seems very intelligent. Both of them consider him their private tutor. Hearing this, Tsubasa thinks helping them could be useful, so he doesn't mind. Upon arriving at Minami's house, she explains that her parents are at work and her little sister is in dance class. This surprises Sayuri, thinking Minami is more like a younger sister than an older one. Minami tells them she'll get some drinks and in the meantime, they should go to her room. Sayuri asks for the exact location of her room, complaining a bit that it doesn't make sense to send them to a room they don't know. Hearing this, Tsubasa reveals it's not their first time at Minami's house, surprising Sayuri. He explains they just stayed in the living room and watched a movie together. After hearing this, Sayuri jokingly calls him ugly pervert. Tsubasa tries to clarify they didn't do anything strange and that Minami simply fell asleep on the sofa, though Sayuri remains unconvinced. As soon as they enter Minami's room, they notice the feminine ambience that permeates every corner. Tasa reflects that he's never been in a girl's room before, remarking that it smells quite nice. He imagines this must be because Minami spends all her time here, whether playing, sleeping, or even changing clothes. The thought of the latter makes him blush quite a bit, and he feels Sayuri's gaze on him again, teasing him as a pervert. Soon after, Minami arrives with the drinks, and upon seeing what beverage Sayuri has chosen, she approves, noting it's a good choice with the ribbon napolin. Tsubasa admits he's unfamiliar with that drink but finds it quite tasty upon trying it. Minami explains that it's been a traditional drink in Hokkaido for as long as she can remember. Sayuri mentions she enjoys the bubbles and the soda, finding it refreshing and ideal for studying, jokingly feeling like she's doing a commercial for the drink. Minami then suggests they quiz each other, and Tsubasa proposes they ask about topics from the first day of exams, like history. While it's Tsubasa and Sayuri's turn, Minami grows increasingly nervous, not understanding what they're discussing. 
when it's her turn, she awkwardly shares a random fact about ancient wheat production, which both Tsubasa and Sayuri find impressive, but unrelated to the exams, embarrassing her. Despite the awkward moment, they continue to focus on their studies, with time flying by quickly. In a scene change, we find Tsubasa's grandmother cooking, mentioning they'll be having fried chicken for dinner that night. Returning to the group, Manami complains of feeling exhausted from studying so much, echoing Sayuri's sentiments. Tsubasa congratulates them on their efforts and then realizes he's exceeded his curfew, hastily bidding farewell to rush home. As he opens the door, he stumbles and thanks to Manami's mommy's airbags, he is safe as his face shoved into her airbags. After a few moments, she realizes he's there studying and offers to drive him home since they live quite close by. Meanwhile, Tsubasa can't shake off the sweet scent and the feeling of his face still flushed. He's aware that Minami's mother knows he plays the piano well, as Minami had mentioned before. Upon hearing this, she mentions that he has been playing since childhood, her tone becoming a bit more serious. She also confides in him about Minami's disastrous Valentine's Day, and how worried she was about her mood when she got home. However, Minami arrived home with a smile, talking excitedly about how well Tsubasa played the piano, which greatly relieved her. She expresses her gratitude to him and even gives him a soda before he leaves, recognizing his hard work and offering it as a gift. This inspires him to strive even harder. However, he's suddenly startled by his grandmother's loud shout, scolding him for coming home late. The next day, as he heads to class, he's still nervous about the incident, with flashbacks of his grandmother's firm words echoing in his mind. She had made it clear that as long as he lived in her house, he had to follow her rules. Although she let it slide this time, she warned him sternly that if he repeated such mistakes, there would be consequences. Tsubasa accepts her warning without protest. Back in the present, Tsubasa finds himself gazing at a girl he sees ahead. Upon closer inspection, he believes she might be from another country due to her appearance. Our simp admires her beauty and refinement. Suddenly, some crows swoop down near the garbage area, startling them. Catching his eye, the girl informs him that he's rid of those pests now and advises him to hide, leaving Tsubasa confused by her use of the word scum. Once Tsubasa arrives at school, he tells Minami about what happened. She quickly identifies the person as Rena, feeling a pang of envy that she was the first thing he saw today, demonstrating how much he adores her. It turns out Rena has won the high school beauty contest two years in a row, and is rumored to have one foreign parent, making her quite famous for her beauty around the school. Afterward, Minami offers for him to join her and Sayuri in another study group, but Tsubasa declines. He explains that he needs to study alone starting today until the exams are over, not because he doesn't want to study with them, but he needs to focus. Minami reluctantly accepts his decision, though not entirely pleased. Tsubasa refrains from telling her about his grandmother getting furious as he doesn't want them to worry about him. Later, when Yuri sees him, she suggests studying together again, but Tsubasa declines once more. The reason being they don't study well when they're alone, which happened when Tsubasa left abruptly the night before. At lunchtime, Minami joins Sayuri instead of eating alone, mentioning how strange it is that Tsubasa isn't in his usual seat for the first time. Sayuri senses that Minami might be upset with him for not wanting to study together, which Minami denies, feeling a bit embarrassed. Meanwhile, Tsubasa is studying in the library for a change of scenery, making good progress. Suddenly, he hears some snoring and looks up to see Rena asleep in the distance, finding her beautiful even in her sleep. He wonders what she might be dreaming about to smile like that, feeling relaxed just watching her. She wakes up and mentions the word Sekigahara, leading Tsubasa to assume she was dreaming about war, smiling due to some imagined massacre. Renan notices him looking and Tsubasa quickly looks away, not wanting to be distracted. He focuses on studying alone but realizes Rena is now sitting beside him. She tells him she's part of the library committee, meaning she has authority over the library at the moment. If she deems it okay, he can sleep there. Tsubasa understands her concern about him seeing her asleep in that place and assures her he doesn't mind. Rena then comments on his good posture, poking him with her finger, causing him to react strangely. When she glances at his notebook, she points out a mistake in one of his answers, and upon checking, Tsubasa realizes she's correct. Rena mentions that if he's studying, he must be a first-year student, wishing him luck before leaving. Tsubasa wonders if she noticed the mistake just by glancing at it, but then dismisses the thought as unlikely. Later, when Tsubasa arrives home alone, he is greeted by his grandmother, who is not in the best of moods. She mentions she's been thinking all day about what she can do to help him, aware that he's at an age where he may face challenges she doesn't fully understand. 
Since moving to Hokkaido, he's let his guard down, and what he needs now is time to develop his mental strength, which she believes the tea ceremony can provide. She reminds him that they used to do this often when they were in Tokyo but it will be his first time there. Tsubasa reassures her that it's like riding a bike, the body doesn't easily forget the movements. Before they can begin the tea ceremony, the doorbell rings. Tsubasa goes to answer it and is surprised to find Renan Atsukawa, who introduces herself as their neighbor. Before she can explain why she's there, they both become distracted upon recognizing each other. Tsubasa realizing she's delivering the neighborhood bulletin, and they are neighbors, which he finds pleasant. Renau, on the other hand, becomes fixated on his attire, finding Japanese clothing extravagant. She suddenly tosses the bulletin aside and throws herself at him, shocking Tsubasa. His grandmother, noticing the delay, comes to investigate and finds Renau lying on top of Tsubasa's chest. Tsubasa, shocked by the situation, asks for an explanation from his grandmother. Rena quickly separates herself, claiming she accidentally slipped and Tsubasa saved her from falling. She then hands over the bulletin. Tsubasa notices Rena's change in behavior, and his grandmother realizes she's acting differently. She apologizes for the commotion and thanks Rena for bringing the bulletin. After Rena leaves, Tsubasa's grandmother comments that Rena must live nearby, as her father usually delivers the bulletin. She finds Rena charming, which surprises Tsubasa, as his grandmother doesn't usually make such comments. As Tsubasa gazes outside, lost in thought about Rena, his grandmother urges him to focus. She reprimands him again, making it clear why he's let his guard down. She tells him that strengthening his mind is useless if he's going to weaken it again. She then drops a bombshell. He must rank in the top 10 of the school exams, or she'll send him back to Tokyo, a consequence he hadn't expected to hear at all. The next day, as Tsubasa makes his way to class, he reflects on how he never thought his first exams there would turn out like this. However, it's true that he got distracted remembering the moments he had fun with Minami and Sayuri, assuming that this would happen sooner or later. Now that it has happened, he is determined to give his all to studying in order to rank among the top 10. While on his way, Rina greets him and lets him know she was waiting for him, as she wanted to discuss some things with him. She asks if he's okay with her offering to help him study, but he doesn't think it would be enjoyable to talk with her. Rina notices he looks upset and asks if he had any problems because of their encounter yesterday. Tsubasa responds that it's not the case, explaining that he's troubled by his studies. Nevertheless, she apologizes and shares her love for historical things, admitting that she loses her mind when she sees Japanese clothing. Tsubasa now understands why she did what she did, thinking she has a very unusual fetish, not expecting her to be passionate about history. As a form of apology, Rina offers to help him study, hearing that he needs to rank well for the exams. She assures him not to worry, mentioning that she's always been the top student since coming to that school, which surprises Tsubasa. Rina explains she could teach him techniques and strategies for the subjects. After hearing her out, Tsubasa realizes she's not only cute but also incredibly smart, assuming she solved that problem from before instantly. Therefore, he decides to ask for her help respectfully, determined to achieve his goal of staying in Hokkaido. Rana accepts his request, impressed by his determination, promising to do everything she can to teach him. She informs him that for the next three days, they will only have morning classes, so he should go to the library storage room after class before the exams. The library is open for studying, but she'll let him into the storage room where no one else has permission, ensuring there won't be any issues. She reminds him that she's on the library committee, and because of this, she'll have him all to herself for tutoring, which makes Tsubasa a bit embarrassed. Here, Tsubasa realizes that if no one else can enter, they'll be alone in a private room, unsure if he can concentrate in such a situation. Now, with Minami, she talks to a friend about how stressed she is because of the exams, which are only a few days away. When her friend leaves, she notices Tsubasa and informs Minami, who quickly rushes out of the bathroom to see him and boost her spirits. However, as she peeks out, the first thing she sees is Tsubasa arriving with Rina, conversing calmly. After Rina leaves, Minami approaches with an aura that initially unnerves Tsubasa, but she quickly becomes cheerful, asking how he became friends with Rina, feeling envious. She mentions seeing Rina in the morning, unable to even look at her face because she's so beautiful, relieving her stress. Seeing her like this, Tsubasa remembers that Minami idolizes Rina. On their way to class, he explains that Rina is their neighbor, which is why they came together. For a moment, Minami stops in the hallway with a puzzled look, but when Tsubasa asks if something's wrong, she brushes it off. In class, the teacher informs them that for the next three days, there will only be morning classes, urging them to go home directly to study. The library will also be open for studying, 
but they must use it wisely and not disturb anyone. After this, Minami asks Tsubasa if they can't study together today either. He apologizes, explaining that he needs to focus a lot on these exams, so they can't study together. Minami accepts his answer, apologizing for pressuring him. It's then that Tsubasa remembers he has to rank among the top 10, but it bothers him a lot to have to reject Minami's invitations. Even though he could tell her everything and she would probably blame herself, he doesn't want that. This problem is his, and he must solve it on his own. As long as he stays silent and gets into the top 10, nothing will happen. Upon leaving and heading to the library, he enters the storage room to meet Rina. However, seeing her sitting in a rather striking manner, he can't help but feel nervous. With a bit of effort, he manages to calm himself down by taking a deep breath before telling her that he wants to start with mathematics. After completing a few exercises, she tells him he did very well and that at this rate, he might reach a C grade. But this isn't enough for him, and she accepts that, pointing out some careless mistakes in his calculations, so they proceed to solve more problems to improve his accuracy. She then asks who his math teacher is, to which Tsubasa responds that it's Professor Takahashi. Upon learning this, Rina mentions that the professor often uses the same problems from tests in the final exams, so it would be useful to review them. At the end of their study session, Tsubasa thanks her for teaching him and dedicating her time to him. Rina responds that it was nothing and that he inspired her to progress further with her studies. He then asks if she can continue helping him for the next two days, to which she agrees. But she also asks him something in return. Why is he studying so hard? It takes him a moment to respond. But Tsubasa explains that if he doesn't make an effort now, he'll lose sight of the people who mean a lot to him. With a smile, Rina lets him know that she would like him to reward her for helping him. If he manages to achieve the ranking he's aiming for, she wants him to go on a date with her. This revelation leaves Tsubasa stunned and paralyzed, hearing something like that. Later that night, Manami enjoys watching TV with her sister, but seeing her so relaxed prompts her sister to ask if she shouldn't be studying for the exams. Manami responds that she's not in the mood and then approaches her mom to ask if she has ever felt tightness in her chest and difficulty breathing even without having a cold. With such a strange question, her mom asks if she had tried something odd, embarrassing Minami and causing her to forget to ask her about that doubt. Meanwhile, Tsubasa continues studying and receives a call from Rina for help. Rina arrives to see their progress and Tsubasa expresses gratitude for all the assistance she's provided. After hearing this, Rina mentions that this has also been very stimulating for her, and obviously, there awaits a reward for her help. As she utters those final words, Tsubasa can't help but react quite embarrassed. After they end the call, a few minutes later, Tsubasa's grandmother approaches to give him some snacks, noticing his studious demeanor. She asks if he's ready for the exam since they start tomorrow, to which he responds that he'll do his best and really wants to continue living there. The next day finally arrives, marking the beginning of the exams, and it's only the first day. Minami appears quite happy about this since she doesn't have to study anymore, while Sayuri remains nervous because she wasted a lot of time playing. On the other hand, Rina prays, which surprises a classmate as she usually finds exams easy. Tsubasa, however, remains completely focused and as soon as they're given the signal to start, he gives it his all. At the end of that day of exams, Minami feels a bit down due to how disastrous her performance was. As she walks through the halls, she sees Tsubasa turning the corner, but when she tries to catch up, she loses sight of him. Searching for him in the library, she can't find him anywhere, which strikes her as odd. The next day, she mentions to him that today is the last day of exams and asks if he was studying in the library yesterday because she saw him in the hallway and tried to catch up but lost sight of him. However, she assumes it must have been someone else. Tsubasa agrees, feeling a bit nervous about it. Although in his mind, he thinks he didn't want to hide everything about Rina from Minami, changing the subject. Minami suggests that they go out and have fun once the exams are over, and Tsubasa agrees to the idea, feeling more determined than ever. Tsubasa understands that if he ranks among the top 10, everything will be resolved, including hiding things from Minami. A week later, another Minami can be seen depressed by her poor results. She confides in Sayuri that she only got the questions they reviewed while studying with Tsubasa correct. She asks Sayuri how she fared, and Sayuri responds that she did slightly better than average, ranking 72nd out of 176. Hearing this hurts Minami even more, as she is ranked 148th out of 176, with worse grades than before. Meanwhile, Tsubasa visits the library storage room again to inform Rina about his position. It turns out he ranked third, showing great happiness for having achieved his goal, and letting her know it was all thanks to her help. 
Hearing this cheers Rina up, although Tsubasa asks her how she fared, fearing that he might have caused her to drop in ranks by taking up her time. However, she reassures him not to worry, reminding him that she always ranks first, which is also her position in the rankings. She then asks if he remembers their promise, smiling when he confirms that he does, eagerly awaiting Sere. In the afternoon, Minami's mother approaches her room to let her know she's going shopping and asks if Minami wants anything. However, she leaves when she receives no response from Minami. On the other hand, Tsubasa's grandmother asks him where he's going, noticing his Japanese attire. He responds that he's going to meet a friend for a drink, and due to his good grades, she allows him to go without complaint. As he leaves, Tsubasa thinks he left a bit earlier than he wanted, still having 15 minutes before the appointed time to meet Rina. At that moment, he's greeted by her, and as he turns to see her, he's astonished by her attire, which accentuates her beauty. Rina compliments him on how handsome he looks in the Japanese clothing, assuring him that she won't jump on him this time. She also confesses that she had been looking forward to this day for a long time since childhood, always dreaming of having a date dress like this. She was so excited that she couldn't wait and left the house early, trying to keep herself in control. Tsubasa asks her to allow him the honor of accompanying her today, a request she finds beautiful, and they proceed forward together. As they continue on their date, by chance, Minami's mother happens to be in a car on the same street. Upon recognizing Tsubasa, she notices that he's accompanied by a rather beautiful girl, which surprises her greatly. Continuing through the park, Rina notices Minami's gaze and asks if she has something on her face. Tsubasa responds that she doesn't, but he's just impressed by how well she wears a kimono. Rina thanks him for the compliment, mentioning that they have many kimonos, but today she wanted to wear her favorite one. She then asks where they should go today, and Tsubasa remembers that he should have thought about it beforehand. However, he tells Rina that since he doesn't go out often, he doesn't know many good places to go, apologizing for it. Rina takes the initiative and, as she turns to look at him, she tells him that as long as she's with him, she's happy to go anywhere, even just walking down the street. This beautiful image of Rina along with her lovely words make Tsubasa blush quite a bit, and because of that, he suggests taking a stroll. Meanwhile, Minami receives some messages from her mother who informs her about an emergency. It turns out that Tsubasa is on a date with another girl. Minami quickly sits down in shock after reading the message, not liking this news at all. Later, Minami finds herself in a shopping center where she arranged for Sayuri to meet her. As soon as they meet, Minami makes sure Sayuri notices that Tsubasa and Rina are together. Despite this, Minami remains transfixed by how beautiful Rina looks in her kimono. On the other hand, Sayuri notices that they are wearing matching kimonos, which signifies they are on a date, something Minami already knows. She lets Sayuri know that her mother wrote to inform her that Tsubasa was with a girl, asking for the location, and upon learning it was Rina, she was greatly surprised. After hearing this, Sayuri asks why Minami brought her there, to which Minami only responds that she thought Sayuri would be interested. Sayuri admits this is true and agrees to follow them discreetly. Tsubasa and Rina reach the hook game area, with him thinking he has never been to a place like this in a kimono, which strikes him as odd. Rina is delighted to see one of these games in action, mentioning that it's the Melon Kuma, the local mascot of Yubari. She also becomes fascinated by the other plush toys. Although Tsubasa finds it strange, he accepts that there will be people who enjoy such things. After hearing her enthusiasm, he asks if she wants him to try catching one. When she agrees, he sets out to catch the bear. His first attempt fails, and despite trying several times, he still doesn't succeed. While they are with them, Sayuri, seeing them from afar, begins to criticize Tsubasa for his poor skills with the machine, despite being an expert at these games herself. She reaches a point where she attempts to show him how it's done, but Minami stops her to prevent her from ruining the date. After a great effort, Tsubasa manages to grab a small plush toy, not knowing which one it is. Rina feels delighted upon seeing it, explaining that it's the local mascot of Katami named Min. Tsubasa decides to give it to her, which Rina gratefully accepts, promising to always take care of Min. Seeing her beautiful expression, our simp blushes, thinking it's divine purity as he watches them talk together. Minami comments that he is very kind and always makes an effort for anyone, admiring that about him, especially because he's doing it for Rina, who lives in a place with people she doesn't know. 
Despite it not being easy, he never shows it and instead doubles his efforts. One could say he's the best kind of person there is, and Minami wishes she could be like that too. Upon realizing everything she said, Minami becomes embarrassed and nervous. However, she notices that Sayuri wasn't listening to her, as she got distracted while taking out a bunch of plush toys from the boxes in that short period of time. At that moment, they hear Tsubasa mention something about a movie starting soon. Heading to the fourth floor where the cinema is located, Minami asks Sayuri to accompany her to follow them, but Sayuri gets distracted while searching for bags for her plush toys. This causes them to lose sight of them, and as an apology, Sayuri gives Minami half of the plush toys. Doing so is enough to make Minami happy. Sayuri sees once again how simple Minami is when it comes to such things. Eventually, they also head to the cinema, but they end up watching a different movie since they already lost sight of them. Rena, on the other hand, is quite happy to watch the movie she desired, leaving Tsubasa dazzled by her radiant aura as they watch the film. Tsubasa realizes it's about someone struggling to forge a career, which he believes Rena will appreciate. Glancing over to observe her, he is somewhat surprised that Rena is watching the movie with such seriousness. The girl in the movie wonders what she must do to prove her worth to earn praise, wanting to know if she will always have to try to meet others' expectations. Tsubasa notices Rena shedding tears during this scene, which he didn't expect. But after the movie ends, they both head to a cafe. Tsubasa expresses that he thought the movie was very good, especially loving the final scene where the protagonist stands up, and everyone recognizes her, finding it moving. Rena admits that she cried during the movie. Tsubasa asks if she cries easily, and she denies it, explaining that it's not normal for her but she identifies with the protagonist. She talks about how she also studies a lot and takes lessons, but even when she does well, nobody recognizes it. Tsubasa asks if that also happens to her because he didn't know that such a perfect person could experience that. He confesses that he always experienced it, which is why he fought with his parents and ended up running away to Hokkaido. However, he clarifies that he's not an aggressive person but can sometimes be stubborn. Hearing this, Rena believes she's the opposite, always concerned about how others perceive her. She feels that if she doesn't keep improving, nobody will appreciate her, and sometimes wonders why she's there, thinking that if nobody valued her, she could just stop altogether. Then she wonders if anyone cares about her at all. Tsubasa tells her that if that's what inspired her to succeed, it has its positive side. She works hard to make others happy, which she believes everyone knows, but very few take it seriously. She finishes what she starts, and surely there are many people who can see her and think, I should also make an effort. Rena is surprised to hear this, asking if people really see her, to which Tsubasa confirms that they do. He doesn't want to sound arrogant, but he knows what she means when she says she doesn't know if anyone cares about her. Although he knows it was much harder for her, he reminds him of the scene where the protagonist shouts, I am who I am, realizing that she can only be herself, not in a negative way, but in a positive one. Rena tells him that was her favorite scene, and Tsubasa agrees, making her see that they do have things in common. She then mentions that many people think she's strange and hardly feels understood by people, so she's very glad she met him. In response, Tsubasa admits that he's also glad to have met her, and that after spending the day together, talking and such, he wants to know more about her. It's then when Rena asks him if he has a girlfriend because she knows he's responsible, so if he had one, he wouldn't have gone out with her. Just then, Minami and Sayuri come down the escalator, and Minami sees them in the cafe. Tsubasa responds that he doesn't have a partner, looking somewhat embarrassed. This prompts Rena to ask if he ever feels lonely, especially since he came to Hokkaido where he doesn't know anyone and had to make many new friends. She wonders if she were in his place, she would have felt very lonely. Tsubasa admits that many things were difficult there, and it might sound strange, but now he has very special friendships that accept him just the way he is. So he doesn't feel lonely for a moment. Minami and Sayuri are listening to them talk while remaining hidden. Tsubasa continues talking about how he also has a companion who works very hard and is an example for everyone. So every day he spends there, people give him strength to keep going. Hearing these words makes Rena smile happily, delighted that he likes Hikado. Tsubasa asks if she wants them all to meet up next time, and as soon as Minami hears that, she approaches to exclaim that they can count on her, which catches the attention of Tsubasa and Rena. Sayuri asks if it's okay for them to be seen, as it was supposed to be a secret, something Minami didn't even know. Hearing this, Tsubasa understands that the two were spying on them. Minami tells him it's not fair and that he can't betray her and go off with Rena alone. Rena then asks Tsubasa who these girls are, and he introduces them as his classmates, Minami and Sayuri. 
but Minami asks him when he will tell her that they are his two special friends, making him embarrassed. Minami then asks Sayuri to say something since she's also one of his special friends, which she eventually agrees to, albeit a bit reluctantly. Tsubasa admits that it's true that both of them are his special friends, but he can't find the right words to explain it. Seeing this scene, Rina believes she understands everything, smiling a little blushingly. At that moment, Minami formally introduces herself to Rina, confessing that she has admired her for a long time, then asking if she can shake her hand. Rina agrees to this request, making Minami quite happy. Seeing their interactions a little better, being together, Rina can't help but laugh a little, finding it amusing and easy because Tsubasa considers them special. Suddenly, Minami's mother greets the four of them, informing them that she has sold a lot of clothes she put up for sale on Mikari and has a bit of extra money. She thought that since they are all together, they might want to go eat yakiniku. This means she's inviting them too. She tells them that they have the highest number of yakiniku restaurants per capita in Hokkaido. After a bit of insistence, Rene eventually agrees, and they all head to that restaurant. Once there, Minami's mother tells Tsubasa and Rina that the smell will stick to their kimonos. Rina responds that they shouldn't worry because hers is washable. Still, she hands both of them a plastic bag, asking them to wrap the heiori with it. Minami ends up being the first to try the meat, enjoying it slightly cooked and being delighted by its flavor as she talks about how delicious it is. Sayuri and Rina can't help but eagerly anticipate being able to try something too, having to wait for their portions to be cooked properly. After waiting for a while, they finally get to try their slice of meat, equally fascinated by how good it tastes. Renan describes it as having a crispy surface combined with juicy meat inside, complemented excellently by the chives. On the other hand, Sayuri believes there's nothing better than pork and finds the delicious aroma almost overwhelming. Minami's mother sees that the skirt steak is almost ready, while Tsubasa asks what kind of cut that is, surprising them since he doesn't know what it is. Rina thinks that in Tokyo and other places, they categorize it as skirt steak. Tsubasa asks what part is the skirt steak, and Rina tells him it's the diaphragm. It's basically a special cut. When tasting this meat, Tsubasa comments that it's not fatty but very tender, beginning to talk about how delicious it is as it's a new experience for him. At this point, Tsubasa mentions that when it comes to meat, he would have thought it would be like lamb or yakiniku beef, wondering if they often eat in restaurants like this. Minami responds that they don't need to go to a restaurant for that since they often eat jinzunk at home, and there are even grills for it. Shortly after, Minami's mother tells Tsubasa that he's very lucky to be surrounded by adorable girls, which makes him feel like he's in paradise. She asks if Sayuri and Rina seem very lovely to him, avoiding mentioning Minami as she's part of their own family. In response, Minami comments that Rina could be in a special category since she always comes first in exams, making Rina feel a little embarrassed. Sayuri thinks that being both pretty and intelligent, Rina hit the genetic jackpot. But Minami tells her she's wrong and that Rina actually puts in a lot of effort. Minami points out the effort Rina puts into things like makeup and nails, which require a lot of work. And she comes first because she studies like crazy. Understanding this, Sayuri admits that it's true, apologizing for being inconsiderate. On the other hand, Tsubasa whispers to Rina that as she can see, there are people who value her. This makes her feel happier because he was right. Later, they finish eating, and while they're outside, Minami approaches Tsubasa alone to ask something, wanting to know if he and Rina were dating. Tsubasa is surprised by this sudden question, immediately responding that it's not the case, and the whole date had its explanation. Hearing that, Minami says she won't ask anything further, but only if the next date is with her, and they could even make it a nighttime affair, whispering these words in his ear. Obviously, this makes Tsubasa very nervous, and seeing him flustered, she confesses that she was just teasing him. However, before leaving, she clarifies that the other part is serious, asking him to have a real date since the holidays are coming soon. At that moment, she joins the others, suggesting they have a barbecue when the weather gets better, inviting Rina to this future gathering. Minami assures them it will be amazing, asking Tsubasa if he agrees, to which he responds positively. At that moment, he realizes that spring is almost here in Hokkaido and is already looking forward to it. On another day of class, Sayuri appears affected by the cold, convinced that the worst month of all is March. Minami approaches to greet her, asking if she's not excited about tomorrow, as it's white day already on the 14th. Sayuri isn't sure about it, as many people don't take it seriously, while Minami believes that Tsubasa is surely planning something, which pleases Sayuri. At that moment, Minami sees Tsubasa arriving and approaches him for a surprise interview. 
When asked, Tsubasa confirms he'll return the gifts but hasn't started yet. Minami feels a bit disappointed, thinking he would be more nervous about this special day. This conversation is overheard by Matsuo Takeyumi who later approaches Tsubasa to ask for a moment of his time, showing nervousness. Matsuo seeks advice about White Day, and they move to another place to talk in detail. There, Matsuo expresses feeling terrible and wanting to apologize to Minami and Sayuri, understanding that what he said to them was very rude, referring to when he belittled Minami's chocolate on Valentine's Day. He explains he didn't mean it in a bad way but upon reflection, realized he behaved foolishly. He hasn't been with Minami since then, and he's sure Sayuri also hates him, so he wants to give them a gift on White Day and apologize at the same time but wants to know what he should say, needing advice. Tsubasa understands his situation better now and simply advises him to apologize as he should, and tells him he wants to be their friend, doubting Minami is still upset about it and surely wants to be his friend. If Sayuri sees him apologizing to her, he believes that will be enough. After hearing his advice, Matsuo considers him a professional Rizzler, accepting his words and deciding to apologize tomorrow. On the other hand, Tsubasa shows determination to continue with his own affairs. Upon arriving home, Tsubasa speaks with his grandmother, asking for help with something. It turns out he needed her support to make homemade sweets, recalling the ingredients she used in the treats she used to make. She remarks that this tradition of White Day wasn't practiced in the past. Tsubasa tells her that when expressing gratitude formally, it can feel awkward, so having an excuse like White Day is useful. Additionally, everyone wants the people they appreciate to be happy. These sweet words make his grandmother smile, accepting that he's right. Later, Matsuo meets alone with Minami in the classroom. He leans towards her to apologize, admitting he said something terrible on Valentine's Day and sincerely regrets it. As a gesture of gratitude and apology, he presents her with an onion cake from Oceania. Minami is delighted to receive this gift, mentioning she loves his cakes and assures him she has already forgotten about it, so he shouldn't worry. She thanks him and asks to continue being friends. After hearing this, Matsuo becomes quite happy and can't hold back his tears. After that, Tsubasa and Sayuri enter the classroom as they were eavesdropping on their conversation. Tsubasa asks if she's no longer angry, to which Sayuri responds that if Minami isn't bothered, neither is she. Matsuo takes the opportunity to also give Sayuri a cake. Tsubasa does the same by giving all three of them bags filled with sweets. He confesses that it's his first time baking sweets and that his grandmother used to make them for him since they were his favorites, senbei milk, and he thought it was a good opportunity to share his favorite treat with them. They express gratitude for this and Matsuo approaches Tsubasa, telling him he's a good guy and asking how he can show his gratitude. Insisting he tells him something he likes, Tsubasa is at a loss for words. Minami and Sayuri are enchanted by Tsubasa's special gift to both of them. Later, Tsubasa informs his grandmother that the milk senbei was a success, and they were delighted with the sweets. Minami tells him she wants to try making them, so she asks for the recipe. His grandmother accepts this request without any issues and promises to give it to her later, showing a smile of delight at this gesture. While Tsubasa is sending the recipe to Minami, he suddenly receives a message from Matsuo. Matsuo asks if he's free on Sunday to go fishing for capelanes, wanting to thank him for today and mentioning that his father will also come along. He reassures Tsubasa that it's fine if he's a novice at fishing, which puts Tsubasa more at ease. On the day itself, Tsubasa is surprised by the landscape that Lake Abashiri offers, mentioning he's excited as it's his first time. Matsuo points out a good spot, so the two of them set off on their own while his father goes elsewhere. On the way, Matsuo's father tells Tsubasa that the fishing season is almost over, so they should have fun catching whatever they can. Shortly after, they encounter Minami, who explains that her whole family comes fishing each year because her father loves it. Tsubasa feels nervous upon hearing this and glances at her store. Minami tells them they haven't caught anything, so they decide to change locations. Consequently, she finds herself alone, though she was getting bored and planning to return to the car. Matsuo asks her if she wants to fish with them, and she immediately accepts. When they reach a spot, Matsuo uses the appropriate tool to make a hole, requiring considerable strength for that initial step. Afterward, he explains to both of them that the next steps involve sitting because it's impossible to do it standing, and they decide not to set up the tent due to the good weather and lack of wind. Next comes the fishing rod, with Matsuo agreeing to bait it for them. When it's ready, they must lower the line until the weight reaches the bottom of the lake and then raise and lower it carefully because capelanes are usually at the bottom. Both of them are impressed by his knowledge, but after an hour of waiting, they still haven't caught anything. 
That's when Matsuo decides to check on his father, thinking that this spot might not be good for fishing. Tsubasa asks Minami if she's not getting bored, to which she responds that she isn't, mentioning that it's been a long time since they've been alone together. He awkwardly agrees with her, realizing that even though they've spent so much time together, he still finds it difficult. She admits it's strange to sit in silence while waiting, so she suggests watching a video together and moves her seat next to his. The video she shows him is about makeup, from an influencer she's been following recently, admiring her skill, and aspiring to be as good as her at applying makeup. Minami compliments her on her natural and charming makeup, asking flirtatiously if he finds her charming. This makes him nervous, and he quickly clarifies that he was referring to her makeup. He admits he doesn't know much about makeup and is impressed by how much she knows and continues to learn. Minami agrees with him, smiling, and tells him that she not only wants to improve her own makeup skills but also wants everyone to look good and considers studying beauty. She expresses her dream of studying abroad, although she acknowledges it is just a dream. Tsubasa admires her plans and finds her perspective on beauty and makeup extraordinary, causing Minami to blush at his comforting words. She then asks if he uses skincare products or something similar, to which he responds negatively. She tells him he has good features and with a little effort, he could enhance them. Encouraged, she offers to put some lipstick on him to prevent his lips from drying out, but Tsubasa misinterprets this gesture as an indirect kiss, leading to a flurry of thoughts in his mind. Before anything further happens, Matsuo calls out to them from a distance, informing them that his father caught a lot of fish. He suggests moving to another location to fish more and make tempura. Minami gets excited about the idea, while Tsubasa thinks that Minami almost took his soul out of his body and silently thanks Matsuo for saving him. After changing locations, they start catching many fish and enjoy cooking and eating them together, with Tsubasa particularly enjoying the new experience. Matsuo even offers Tsubasa some onigiri, which further delights him. With the combination of hot tempura and fresh onigiri, Tsubasa's first experience fishing for capelanes turns out to be incredibly fun. He caught a massive cold, probably because he decided to strip down while resting at home. While in bed, he receives a message from Sayuri, who learned about his illness from Matsuo. She sends him encouraging words to get well soon, which he appreciates. Then, his grandmother comes over and brings him some porridge and a bottle of water that Rene Natsukawa, their neighbor, brought over. Rene came to deliver the neighborhood newsletter and upon hearing he was sick, went to his house to bring him the water. There's a note from Rene on the bottle, urging him to drink the water and stay hydrated, which warms Tsubasa's heart to see everyone being so kind. Despite drinking water and resting completely, he feels his health deteriorating as time passes. He hadn't expected to fall ill with spring so near, and what's worse is that he feels very lonely. He thought he was used to solitude, but today he needed company. Suddenly, Minami calls him, surprising him with a visit. He's shocked and tries to get up, but she insists he stays lying down. His grandmother told her he doesn't need much stimulation, and she also expressed concern for him, hence she came to look after him for a while. Even though just seeing her in his room is quite stimulating for Tsubasa, she climbs on top of him to check his fever, leaving him in shock. She notices he has a bad cough and a higher fever than she thought, so she gives him some mint candies from Kitami, which she takes when her throat hurts or she wants to freshen up. This makes him feel better, although she jokingly blames herself for his cold, saying she kept urging him to keep trying while they were fishing. She declares she'll do anything he says today, which sends Tsubasa's mind into a whirlwind of thoughts, particularly about the word anything and how vast it is. Feeling dizzy from overthinking, he decides to lie down again. In his weakened state and with his mind not entirely clear, he quietly expresses a wish for Minami to stay by his side. She smiles and takes his hand with hers to accept his wish. The next day, he feels much better, believing that Minami's candies helped a lot. He sends her a message to let her know, and she's happy to hear that. Tsubasa also informs her that he unintentionally fell asleep and wonders if they were talking about anything. It takes her a while to respond, and she tells him they weren't talking about anything, and that he fell asleep like a baby. Despite her nonchalant response, Tsubasa can't shake the feeling that they were holding hands, recalling that sensation somewhat, and wonders if it was just his imagination. Meanwhile, Minami also stares at their hands, mentioning that she would love for them to be like that forever. 